Hello everyone, I'm Alex. And I'm Tony. And now PAX East 2013 is finally over with yep. for us here at Third Rate. And this yeah. is our post-mortem video talking about how it went and all, of course all the videos and games we've played. Yep, and let us you know, just uh, talk about PAX. Uh, yeah, PAX. And, and finally put, put this at the end of this chapter. And close the book and then follow it away and then never return to it until next, until year. next year. Anyway, um... So first and first, traveling this year, uh, PAX East 2012. In case you never didn't go to it last year, was uh, better known as PAX, uh, PAX Easter. Yes, because it happened during Easter weekend. It was it added like an extra hour or so of commute just to get through it. Yeah, uh, specifically going through Connecticut was our problem. Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, and also, but that year we actually also had a better place in terms of a hotel. Yes, we tried a different hotel. Uh, it was a little cheaper than last year's hotel, but it was a lot further than we expected, and. Like the taxis, you know they how the taxis are. Sometimes they'll make you take the scenic route and c cost you a few dollars more. And also the shuttles, ugh, the shuttles are terrible. We well, waited at at, we're at the 50, destination for fifty minutes. Fifty minutes. They finally pick us up, and the person goes like all around Boston to find getting to the wrong spot of the convention hall. So we had to walk all the way underneath it to get to it. So so we should have just have walked. In fact, actually, we walked another day, and we got there in like twenty five minutes. Yeah, it? it was a long walk, but I mean, and it was cold. It was cold. Don't, don't get and, kids, uh, uh, We also had uh, the third day we drove because we had to get out of the hotel, mm -hmm. and uh, that wasn't so bad because the shuttle was consistent. So that well, the problem with that was that, in case you didn't know, we didn't stop at the convention hall's parking lot. We had to go to a, a, a like a, a runoff yeah. lot, which was like dead, like far and gone. Yeah, one of the one of the best parts about last Paxies was that we were able to uh, park at a little parking lot like right there, and it was like fifteen dollars <laughs> to stay. The, unfortunately, this time we get there, and the place is being turned into another building. And unfortunately, yes. I doubt it's a hotel, and I doubt it's a, a parking garage. So I, we think it's just another business. So we're probably not going to be able to take advantage of that. And, and yeah, I don't think anybody's. And that, so that means it. that means next year we'll probably have another issue with parking on the third day as well. But again, we're not going. to... The hotel was nice, the, but the people, the staff was nice. The staff yes, was it was. Nice. It was that wasn't the problem. The problem was it didn't feel like we were spending as much money as we were. Yeah, it was much cheaper. It was much more clustered together. It was next to loud places, and the location wasn't a good place. No, it was the, so. I mean, if you had to go again, it wouldn't, I would take it. But I have to. But I figure more, more arrangements on travel. Yeah, the closer hotels, despite the fact that they are more expensive, probably about about like sixty dollars a person. I think it was uh, like forty dollars. But, person, but in the end, it was still probably worth it to take the the more money just to be closer to, uh, yeah, th than walking that distance as opposed to being like a yeah, long walking. Because distance. when we when we left the convention center, we never returned. For yeah, a day. it was it was, last year was we could go back to our apartment. And if we're running too much time about our hotel, let's, yeah. let's start talking about how the event was. Oh, by the way, traveling was much better. Getting back was a little bit weirder, but we got back much faster than last year, thank God, for Easter traffic. Oh. Anyway, uh, first, now, how was the convention this year? First, from a broad perspective. From a broad perspective, um, there was a lot more... It felt like there was a lot more people here this there time. There was a... Uh, it was about the same amount, I'd say. I think that more people started going into various places. I think last year and last years, we, we didn't go in 2011s, but uh, the last couple times people have been going more consistently. And now people are going to the actual convention hall, going to all the show floor stuff, and then now uh, they're going and saying, hey, we don't need to go home immediately. What else can we do in the convention? Like the classic game room and, and the, the, the free play, play zone. zone and all the, and even the concerts and all yeah, that stuff. All that stuff. So more people are going to those at this point. Uh, ending up uh, taking up more time for, for people who want to, who've been going to it before are now having to have uh, more in the way. Anyway, the panels. We went to uh, five panels this this time. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to the independent journalism panel mm -hmm. with uh, Hip Hop Gamer, uh, Gamer Unplugged. There was one more guy. I think there was the one guy. I can't remember his name. And uh, Neil Ronahan of Nintendo Report, Nintendo Report and, and Nintendo Nintendo Force. Force. And th that was a pretty good, very insightful. Uh, very insightful in t telling people t how to uh, stand out in the crowd of much more institutionalized journalism. And it was interesting to see a different journalism. see a very different side of the spectrum. Where hip hop gamer said it was very pro, uh, getting part, being part with the company, being getting real. Re being getting really close there. Whereas um, unplugged gamer? unplugged gamer is very more of being rural, kind of just going on the in hitting the roads and doing yeah, it himself without any help, support other than by his fans as it as it went through, which is very interesting. Uh, and what was another one we did? Um, uh, we also went to uh, the uh, Radio Free Nintendo and the Connect Connectivity 
panels. Mm -hmm. uh, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Sunday, we actually got there right on the tail end, though, yeah. because of traffic issues from the aforementioned mention of having to drive. And uh, we also there. saw the Precipice of Darkness 4, four uh, event. Yeah. Last year, we went to see Precipice of Darkness 3. Uh, that uh, uh, We actually recorded that one, but we don't. We never posted it because it was already available Ooh, online. Yeah. Uh, the f Precipice of Darkness 4 was actually mostly uh, people asking them to do stuff, and then uh, yeah. well, and Jerry was all like, oh, sure, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> Last year, the, the the Precipice of Darkness 3 event was more actually showcasing the game, talking about what was going to be in the game, and how the process went and how the process was doing. This time around, because people already knew the process and already knew kind of what was going into yeah. it, uh, this was more of a Q&A event. They did announce a few things, but it was more of, hey, ask us questions, we'll try to answer yeah. them. And there was a lot of things like questions like, are the first two games going to get remade in the style of it? Or are you going to make more franchises like Automaton? Uh, so, and yeah. turn them into those, uh, and of course, obviously, uh, being as enthusiastic as he always is, uh, Jerry, uh, go for it. What's all about that? And what, anything else? Oh, we also went and saw the Retro Game Roadshow. Oh yes, that which was, was uh, which was on I think Saturday night. Uh, it was nice because we got to see uh, all these old games. Uh, yeah. Someone brought in a prototype of new uh, of Mario Brothers Two, of Super Mario Brothers Two. There's and a lot. It looks like all the whole Earthbound, yeah, Earthbound, all the wrapping stuff. Like everything's in wrapping, but it's like, is it really sealed? You don't know. And there's some really interesting stuff there. As someone who is not in the collecting world, I usually just get games to play them, not mm -hmm. to collect them. Um, it's quite a different world to be in. Huh? There yeah. are so many different things you got to do. And Oh yeah, there was somebody there with like really in-depth casings and whatnot. It was really kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, that was the panels. That was the panels, but what about the games? We, we did like a bunch of videos on games. We, here's the statistics. Last year we covered about 23 games, and that's including games we just shot like 30 second clips of in like small montages. This year we covered 28 solid games, mm -hmm. with an additional probably like four or five games in, a mo in the miscellaneous montage. Yep. So we covered more than last year, but we didn't cover exactly like an extra like a massive amount. So this 2010 we had like only covered like 10 games. This year we covered so like it was much bigger of a jump. Uh, also. In terms of uh, actual f interviews, we covered pretty much exactly the same amount of people. Now, whereas last year we talked to Jules Watcham of uh, uh, Renegade Kid, that was really just an interview. Also, the heads of Street Pass uh, NYC and Street Pass DC, that was uh, not really a game related. Uh, it was game related. It was game related, but it wasn't attached to a game. All the interviews we did, with the exception of like one person, were all interviews relative to a game. Okay. So that's what's specific about the two. Also, in terms of footage, we covered about two hours and 45 minutes last year. This year we're approaching about three hours and 45. So we did record more footage. So we got more footage because we got longer clips. Uh, there was just, just, maybe it was just me, but it felt like there was a lot more new games at this event than last time. There was a lot more announcements that yes. you're getting at. This is, yeah. Last oh, PAX, it was more kind of like, yeah, there's like a few new big announcements, like uh, I think Sonic 2 was... Uh, Sonic, Sonic 4 episode 2 was, was there. That was a big thing. Mm -hmm. And then there was a few other oh, big announcements, but there wasn't anything like extravagant. Well, that, this year there wasn't like anything that would be like absolutely mind-blowing. There wasn't a PS4 in sight. No. There wasn't a new Xbox there. Oh, uh, there was a uh, Blizzard announced a new game. Blizzard announced a new game, uh, I believe... Uh, there was a few announced games that were being shown for the first time there. We had a uh, few games that were announced by independent developers, and like a lot of Transistor, games, like uh, oh, uh, Capcom announced Ducktales, and their... uh, and also that uh, the Dungeons and Dragons arcade game. Yes. So there were announcements. In fact, there were more announcements this year than last year by far. And it's showing a good trend of I, them accepting PAX East I, as a, a yes. more gamer convention. Yes, but I also think that it might be, be simply because going into the next E3, we're not going to those are all going to be overshadowed because of the next. And that's as if for E3 prediction. Which is another video series. Which is coming soon, now I think about it. Yeah, about three weeks we're going to be doing that. So we're going to go over all the games here that we covered in the order of our playlist. So okay. first, Nintendo. Uh, what do you think of LEGO City? Well, first of all, apparently a lot of people want to play it because it's one of our most vid uh, videos from the list. Uh, but it wasn't that enthralling compared to the Wii U version. I played the Wii U version after PAX, and I found that one much more enthralling. Uh, I think it's because the scope is harder to see. There's this, this dense fog. fog. Uh, there's pop-up everywhere. There's the map is being blocked on the bottom screen whenever they want to prompt you with stuff, which happens often even in the Wii U game. But the bottom screen is always constant on the gamepad. So I, I found those little things a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of like issues that uh, that hinder the game's experience. Like it'll tell you something like, "Look at the map for this this, this mission prompt." And I'm like, "I can't see it. You're blocking it with the prompt." 
So it's it's things like that that just kind of bothered me. I'm not saying it's going to be a bad product when you finally play it. I want it, to see how open it is because I'm worried that the game might be just very linear, just just the main story quests. I want to yeah. see if there's any extras. I'm, the, the, the Wii U game has a ton of side yeah, stuff. Yeah, once I've where I've gotten to a point is just started making it so much more open. There's so many more things to do on the side as well as going the missions. Though, granted, granted, it's mostly really just to find to, that one thing to do and one thing to do here. But it's much. Well, I have to say, I, I am I am impressed that they managed to make a game for the 3DS. Yeah, and apparently the full map of the, the of all Lego City is in fact in this game. Some people thought it was only a portion of it. I think it's the entire map of the game. So, so we got that. And now, as far as other games there, we also saw a demonstration of Animal Crossing. Yep, that was um, nice. It wasn't playable, but they played it for us. I think I can. I know why. If the game was playable, you would not understand how to do anything. Yes, they just wanted to show us the new content because a lot of people already yeah. know how. It's actually like it playing a Nintendo Direct in loop <laughs> the whole time. Um, there was uh, there was a built way place you could get your picture taken dressed up as a as a Lego character. Yep, and also um, there was uh, Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon, and Pokemon. And Dungeon. Pokemon. Yes, they were both sold this on on Saturday. Saturday, uh, on that the day before. Everyone else did. Uh, the line got crazy long. Um, we also uh, they also had some other games like uh, Game and Wario. And yeah, Heat all Man the Wii 3. stuff that was been standard. We've seen them. All, you already saw all the stuff. They said that the up they were updated a little bit, but there was all, I already played them back in uh, Comic Con and yeah, we already showed you footage it's, of that. It's kind of getting slow, getting uh, tiresome. <laughs> I've been to some. Um, there was at, there was Monster Hunter Three there, so people didn't get to play that. They could try yeah. that out. For me, it felt like that Nintendo didn't want to didn't want to announce anything big or even show new stuff. I mean, Pikmin Harmonite there. There were Harmonite. Being, some booth babes were, I think, uh, oh, holding yeah. onto them. But the fact is that I was wanting to see the Nintendo. I, why, where's the new demos? Where's Donkey? Yeah, where's Donkey? Where's Donkey, Donkey Kong Country Three Three uh, D? I mean, it turns three. Come on, we we. The game comes out next month, and no one's seen anything for it. But I think it's more or less that Nintendo kind of is holding back all their content until E3 the, or closer. Until E3. I think that uh, also they took a lot of their stuff from their uh, South by Southwest coverage and brought it to PAX yeah, that's, it's more which I think stuff. kind of is a shame. So, well, move on to the next yeah. person. Uh, Yacht Club Games. Uh, yes, these were we. Z these are uh, my favorite guys. Yakko Games uh, start up from X uh, Way Forward people. Yep. And they uh, they're as of today we're recording it today on the Saturday, uh, and it's uh, they're about to finish their Kickstarter and yep. they're they're way re over their their <laughs> they even went past their original stretch goals to give you an idea of how popular it got they're, suddenly. They basically are making a game Shovel Knight where you it's takes references from Mega Man, Castlevania, Castlevania, Castlevania and and Ducktales and, and Zelda, Zelda 2, Two and all this stuff and Mega Man. I said you said Mega Man at the beginning. Well, I'm just repeating again. I love Mega Man. The and game is, it, yeah, you play yeah. as a knight with his shovel, and you fight different How enemies. Was, and yeah, you you liked it. I liked it. It played nice. It played exactly as you would expect it to play. Yeah, it's just a Mega Man with melee weapons. That's yes. why that's what the Dark Souls concept comes into yes. play. Yes, and I want to. I really want to see what, what the other worlds are. They're going to have. They've, we've seen them talk. We've seen them almost every single one of the Knights of No Quarter. Or the Order yeah. of No Quarter, and I'm trying to figure out what exactly they're going to implement to make the game the full six-hour experience. Yeah, I'm, be. they say it's going to be six hours. I'm hoping that there's a like how I'm trying to figure out how the content is expanded because Mega Man games take maybe well, an hour. There's also a battle mode now, so maybe that's going to oh, be that, that. that's also a good thing they for the stretch goals. Now uh, after that we have two tribes. Two tribes yep. was there showing off Take uh, Toki Tori Two, which is now yep. available on the Wii U eShop <laughs> and going to be soon available. On it Steam. is hard. I was playing, but just letting you know that game is hard. It's fun, but hard. Thank goodness Meverse is around. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a fun experience. Uh, we didn't actually play the game at PAX East, but we got to talk with Colin, uh, the creative director of the game. It was it was really good, and mm -hmm. uh, and it, 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 it it's came really, out. It's, it's a around. fun game. Try it. Is, is it still on sale? I can't remember. It, it was on sale for like four or five dollars off or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, then we also spoke with uh, Jules Watchem, Renegade Kid, yes. last time we saw him. And um, he actually had games to show this time. because oh, he, yeah, he had games to show last time too. We played Bomb Monkey. Yes. Uh, well, this time, this time he actually had a booth. He yeah. actually had a booth. Um, he was showcasing uh, ATV Wild Ride 3D, which I have and it's actually quite fun. Uh, definitely more a multiplayer experience. Um, he, also was so he also was showing off uh, Mutant Muds Deluxe for the Wii U. Which played fine. Uh, very difficult. The Compl new ghost levels. The ghost levels are a completely different experience. So if you expect you're going to play new levels, it's different. It's dodging enemies more than yeah, attacking Yeah, it's them. no longer, I can take you down. It's more like, ah, I'm yeah. scared. They also showed off uh, Cult County, yes. which, is, which, is their actual, which is their new series of games. Uh, I say games because it's episodic. They're going yeah, to we have, didn't know that until we actually interviewed. Yeah. There's going to be six episodes so far, yeah. two seasons worth. Of course, that's all he's planned. Uh, the idea is that he releases each episode, which is about four hours apiece, over the course of uh, about probably about the next couple of years, but it's going to start in 2014. Also, he mentioned that Treasure Knots, which wasn't there, will probably be seen sooner rather than later. So my prediction is we're going to see Mutant Muds Deluxe in the next couple months. 
Uh, and we're also going to see uh, Treasure Knots probably release at the end of the year. In and Cole County's 2014, and that's going to probably cover once every few now, months. Now, Cole, Cole County, they did have a, what they, like an experience demo, yeah, like an exp environment demo, yeah, where yeah. more or less um, it's just you moving around in this western area with a with a rat with a wrench. Yeah, and we have, we actually have it available on our playlist with f in full direct audio in case you wanted to see it. Um, or hear it. Or hear it in case it, it definitely has this, this mood about it. Yeah, it's like, got a good mood about and it. And because you guys made uh Yeah, it's a very early it's, it's early demo and uh he was it's really cool to meet Jules up again and uh talk games and everything yep. about it off and on camera. Yeah. So Good to meet him again. And uh, we also got to speak with, we didn't get to speak with, Alien Trap. Alien Trap was one of the first uh, videos uh, that we covered that we didn't actually speak with the developer. Uh, we actually had, one of my issues with this E3 was that we didn't talk... E3? Yes. This, this is like our E3. <laughs> it's PAX. Uh, PAX East. This probably is PAX East that we didn't interview certain t people that we probably could have or we didn't get better coverage. Uh, one is a Pathion, which we have footage of available. Uh, that was developed by Alien Trap, and we just filmed it off the side as we were going through. We had way too many things to do, so we couldn't. It's really a game it. that uh, takes in the style of uh, uh, Roman Greek, uh, Greek. Grecian, Greek artwork on uh, and uh, pottery and stuff. Yeah, it had good art style. A lot of again, as you expect, because it's from Greek, ancient Greek. Yeah, Greece. yeah. It's, it's a lot of violence. It's 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 all right. I, I definitely would have liked to have spoken with them to learn more about what was going on, but it was fun to see it either way when we passed by. Uh, Axe Studios. Uh, Axe Studios, uh, the development team of, uh, I believe is two brothers because their names are the same. Uh, and uh, we also got to speak with them in the level designer for the game. And uh, the game was two brothers. Uh, and uh, it was a very interesting experience. Uh, the game is, it looks like it's a Game Boy game, but it gives all the pre uh, all this like presentation to show that it's not. Yeah. And they, you actually have a pretty good explanation as to why it's in Game Boy Color. Because Otherwise, you would have to try to explain what color beyond color is. Yeah. Uh, because to to that world, Game Boy Color is the the color that they have. And so when they finally get to see colors beyond that spectrum, it's beyond will. To, it's beyond their minds. Yeah. So um, it's I well, I have to see what the game is in a large scope because so far we've only seen like little segments. yeah little bite segments. When uh, I played, it was a bit stiff. A little stiff in certain points, getting caught in some places. And the game isn't giving me enough hints. Which it's, is, it's very. I, I don't I don't like saying that. But the game would be like. You need two people to enter this door. I'm like, where's the second person? And then I was told I had to go to like, this one area that was a really a bit obscure. Hopefully, that isn't something that I would uh, that I'll have issues with later on. Uh, uh, but they did show a demo of them playing like, an island, they, and stuff. Which, is, which I think was really nice. I would like to see um, the expansion. I, I got to see more. The full scope is it yeah, going to be a level based thing? Or is it it be... looks like it's going to be massive, and, and they said it's going to be like 20 hours, 12 to 20 hours. And I'm like, well, this. Big game. I like to see what it goes. Also, uh, the other game, Project YT2K, which should be shown relatively soon. It's going to be a full 3D game. Mm -hmm. As a team of only so big, I'm surprised they have these two big projects at once, and I hope that they don't suffer from having worked together at the same time. But, you know, that's them. It was fun to talk to them and play the game, and them to show us the game. So. All right. Uh, then uh, Mighty Rabbit, another game developer we didn't speak to directly, uh, was for Saturday Morning RPG. Yes, this uh, was is a new Ouya launch title. Ouya launch title. A bit more or less. That, that was what was more interesting about it was that the guy was playing the Ouya version of the game. Um, you move around in a, like what we saw was a school moving around mm -hmm. it, and then you run to enemies and you go into a battle sequence. And one thing that was interesting was. You'd be able to scratch and sniff stickers. Yeah, you for some reason your binder pops up and says, "All right, scratch, scratch," and you scratch on the the, the, the trackpad yeah. on on the controller for the Ouya, and, you, and then also depending on how fast you scratch, you get upgrades. Yep. And then uh, you get advantages. And hopefully the battles aren't as slow as they were. As I mean, this, they felt slower when I was sluggish, watching. Sluggish. Yeah. Uh, not sluggish. Slow. They were just being longer, like like in uh, Mario and Luigi Two, yeah, kind of. Uh, but the game is supposed to be episodic, so it's like each segment's its own thing. Uh, it looked nice. Unfortunately, that's the only game from the Pax East any showcase that we actually covered in any way. Uh, uh, maybe we should do better. We didn't do that last year either. Or we didn't cover any of the indie showcase. I, we apologize, but we had so many indies to cover. Anyways, it was just hard for us. The, to the, about the the indie mega booth got big. The mega the indie yeah the indie mega booth was huge this year. Last year games. last year I think it was like ten. Last year, or twelve. No, it was like it was like twenty. At but most. still, it was like it took up like a third of the convention hall. It, was, it, was, it, felt, it felt like it, it felt like it. Huh. it was so it was so congested, no, it was so but much. in a good way. Uh, so we also got uh, to speak with Z-Boyd Games again. Nice to talk with Bill and Robert and uh, talk more about Purpose of Darkness Four, 4 and, and CSH, their next project. Uh, it was much. It was a pretty good uh, experience to play the game. It was very interesting. It's different. It, it feels similar, different. but different at the same time. It uses a lot of the same tropes of the re of the previous game, but throws in new ones as well. Uh, 
anyone who's a fan of the third game is going to be a fan of the fourth. Yep. That's what I wanted to say. And also, based on what I've been hearing through their tweets and whatnot, the game is much bigger in scope beyond what we can comprehend in terms of RPG. And we're running lower and lower on time, so let's keep going. Michael Todd Games, we didn't talk to him about uh, Electronic Super Joy, but it looked uh, it looked Hella crazy. Hella crazy. It looked crazy. Uh, yeah, you check the video out, you can see that it's got like this beat. And heavy, heavy the person who played it didn't play a very good job, though. Uh, heavy beats and lots of flashing color, so keep that in mind if you've got... It was it was intense. It was like as soon as I saw the strobe, yeah. I'm like, oh, this game mm -hmm. is crazy. Now, Deja Bond Games, we didn't actually interview them per se. We got to play uh, one, two, three, kick it, drop the beat like an ugly baby. Uh, that was fun. <laughs> I didn't expect to experience as much fun as it did moving a mouse around, getting as close to an object as possible without yes. colliding with it. Music again was pretty really pretty cool. really solid and. Uh, we didn't get to try their other two games, Monster Loves You and uh, Drunken Robot Pornography, well, but uh, we probably could have done the latter of the two, I think, in terms of coverage. Well, I, I like to um, drop that beat like an ugly baby. Yeah. Just, <laughs> and they say they're going to have a uh, they're working on making more stages. They said they have constantly more. And the game is coming out fairly soon. It's in beta stage right now on Steam. Yeah, you can actually... Uh, they put money down and get it on Steam like right now? I don't know if it's available right now. I can't remember exactly. But but you can apparently they're gonna make it so you can put your own music into it and you yep. can you know kinda like Audio Surf. So imagine Audio Surf and Ah the flying grand. It's actually a uh, canonical, canonical sequel to uh Oh yeah, Red, reckless, uh, reckless disregard for gravity. Yes, is it's they say it's actually a sequel to the, to the game. Uh Red Barrels was a very interesting game developer there. It was made of ex-Ubisoft uh, developers, among others, and they were making a game called Outlast, which I got to play. Uh, unfortunately, the footage was uh, of me playing it was not as good quality as... Because like, we're, we're in a dark room. And, and there's no audio. And feed. he was wearing headphones. Uh, he was shaking. I was shaking when I was done, probably for about <laughs> 15 minutes. We, we didn't show a lot of the footage because we didn't want to, to ruin the, the scares. That, that as well. Uh, I would say that over time I was just... Uh, paranoid. I was just paranoid. There was a few really sh heavy shocks. Uh, it wasn't. There was some moment of dread. I don't think I had as much dread over the course of the period, but it was definitely shaking. I don't play those type of games often, so it was something that was a hearing, like hearing bre heavy breathing, and uh, that was you breathing, and then hearing like the, the monster say you you pig and all that stuff. It was, uh, it was put him on edge. It, it was putting me on edge. So it was, definitely, it was, definitely. I, definitely think it, I I have to say, among the the indie games that in that horror genre, the actual quality of the graphics and presentation is top notch on this one. And I look forward to seeing it when it comes out. Uh, then we got uh, Capcom. We're going. At, we we kind of bouncing around <laughs> a bit. Different. Capcom came out of uh, came out with a lot of stuff. Last year they kind of had this Connect game and a few uh, arcade titles. But this year we have actual major titles. We got first of all Resident Evil Revelations. Just the Xbox. Just the Xbox version. version. The PS3 version wasn't there, and neither was the Wii U version. Uh, and it looks it was actually fine. I didn't see a lot of Wii U games, period, on the show. Floor. I think if you look on the indie side, you talk to people and they would say, oh yeah, we're making something maybe for Wii U, possibly. Uh, Nintendo had a whole booth, so it was a big cluster there. But usually last year there was nothing for Nintendo, really, so yeah, give sure. you an idea. Uh, but uh, we also got the uh, Revel uh, Revelations, I thought, was um, played pretty much like the Revelations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you play before, it's there. It looks nicer, it looks cleaner, mm -hmm. um, it po more polished. Um, I, I think that... Um, I, to, I mean, I played the, the 3DS version, and I love the 3DS version. Yeah. So I really hope that the intense mode and difficulty and the new enemies stuff really makes it worth the purchase. And I really like to see the comparison between the two. As in, we're going to probably have to do a comparison between the two at some yes. point. Um, and then we, we all, I also Lost tried out uh, Lost Planet 3. I felt that it was just, you know, I was just called Dead Space 3. But maybe that's because the part that I've played was looked just like Dead Space. It just if I was in a worn-out facility, monsters but, jumping out. Yeah. Uh, I got really frustrated when uh, it gave me a prompt for like the monster was attacking me. Told me press A X X X X X, and the creature finally was. And then a reticle appeared, and then I attacked the reticle, and I'm like, "Well, what do I do? Nothing's happening." And then I finally found out I was supposed to press a, like, a, like a trigger, and then I attack, and it's like, "Well, where?" All the other times in the, the demo, there was there prompts, were prompts, prompts, except here there was no prompt, and I thought that was frustrating. Um, I could see this. Maybe I, but next to me was someone was fighting with his, his mech. Yeah. Was fighting another larger monster. It's a little more intense. And I think that uh, maybe the segment that I played was was the limited scary horror moment. And then those other parts were more action based, more mech, more unique. So I'm just I'm leaving it open. But that if it's all just what I played, then there's really yeah. no surprise there. Yeah, I like the presentation with she, he's messaging his wife and kid. Yeah, but my but my immediate assumption is they're dead. 
<laughs> That's my anytime there's any of those kind of breakaways that come talking to you, dear. Dear, I hope you get this message. She's oh, or or it's either, it's either he's dead and she's finally getting the messages, or she's dead and he's sending messages to nobody. Yeah. So it's one of those two that I'm really concerned about. It's kind of setting up for a disaster. Yeah. Um, now, I'm also DuckTales. DuckTales was great, but we did not get to play it. Sadly, the line oh, was crazy long. They, they, no, it wasn't crazy long. It was capped constantly. They kept capping it. It's like, okay, we're done. No more people can come to this line. And it was it was good. It looked good. It looked good. Apparently, it's highly like, animated. Yeah, highly animated. Great three D model. Kind of, well, okay, only kind of good. I kind of hoping that they offer the original too. They can. not That's licensing issues. Also, having all the people from Ducktales doing the voice work again is pretty crazy. How can they keep the voices the same? I don't know. The original voice actor for Scrooge is like ninety three or something. Ninety four. The man but, is the man is on his last leg. Is he? I don't know. Maybe he's. I don't I know. know how it goes. I want to see where, where Ducktales go with it. Because and they're adding like, extra segments into it too. I know. The, the like extra cut the story is yeah. to it. And actually, so we'll see it. if that's worth it or not. But you know what? Way forward, they have some really good projects. And it's Ducktales. And it's Ducktales. Woohoo! Woohoo! Uh, Microsoft. We didn't cover a lot of Microsoft this year. Yes. Um, we didn't cover a lot of Microsoft it's strictly. Microsoft didn't have that huge section like they did that last, last year. year they had they a connect. Huge, they had a huge chunk dedicated to Connect and they also had this inner section where they had the game like uh, the Xbox games Live games for summer oh, arcade oh, one. Yes. This year they had four segments. One was just it was uh Dance 3 uh what's the game called Dance Central 3 which is already out. They had a section for Halo 4 which is already out but has a new map pack to try out. And then there was another uh, section for Gears of War Judgment, which just recently came, uh, out. came out. So it was really very simplistic, like having three quarters of the actual floor for them was, was just stuff, was stuff we had already seen. But the new stuff, they had uh, State of Decay, which we didn't film because there was a lot of people there. Couldn't really get you know, a good uh, shot in. Uh, Max, and the Magic, uh, Mac, Max and the Magic no, Markers it's... sequel, Max, the Curse of Brotherhood, is... Uh, that was there, and we. I wish we got a, could have gotten an interview with Press Play. I, I think we should, that was one of my uh, mistakes, was not getting an interview with them. Uh, we uh, saw the the uh, we recorded. I, I like. Um, I thought the game also was gonna be kind of is gonna be kind of gory, or it's kind of scary. And and it's supposed to be intense. It is intense because I I saw like when the the kid fall into a bunch of spikes and I'm like saying like. <laughs> Is it what is this supposed to be like? Is Limbo? It, no, it's like a heart of darkness. Oh, <laughs> oh that game. Yes. Anyway, game. Uh, there's also a, a Moto Cross Madness game that's already out, and uh, also there's also this card game that was there in Windows 8 showcase. I have no idea why they were doing that. But either way, I was kind of let down by Microsoft. Other than the, the, those little additions, they had nothing really to show, nearly the same scope. But uh, Sony was actually here. Yeah. The last year they weren't. <laughs> yeah. Good but, uh, they were there only, unfortunately, to show The Last of Us. Yes. Uh, PS4 is out now. It's coming out. But, you know, Last, the of, last us. of Us was there. We only have that little clip at the miscellaneous montage. It was just they, they kept showing alongside the, the, the booth. Uh, clips of from uh, I think it was Nature Discovery. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's, been, show, that's their advertisement since the very beginning. When yeah, they it, even announced it. It me. shows the fungus mutating yeah. insects. Well, the game, if you haven't figured it out, is about the fungus mutating humans. Yeah, but it's also about a, a third-person shooter where you're protecting a, a young girl and in a dystopian future. Yep. So it's pretty much. That's pretty much it. Uh, not, to, I'm not, to, not to downplay it, it's very interesting to put it out so late in the French, in the PlayStation 3's history, yes. but uh, that was the only thing they were pushing. That and Tearaway. Uh, it had its own little booth right next to uh, Shovel, Knight. Shovel Knight. And uh, it was actually interesting to speak with, uh, speak with them about the game. Uh, I really wish I could have played it because the game <laughs> looked really fun. Well, it was, it was also interesting was that they actually had brought with them concept art. Apparently, they actually said before they made any of the characters in the game, they actually would make the characters in paper. paper. So yeah. you'd actually see trees in the background, and these, that, those trees, said, those were actual people. Yeah, it was, it was it was pretty good. It was, I really wanted to play it though. I was like, <laughs> I'm seeing it. I'm like, I want to try it, but you guys are just playing with me at this point. I want to see it. The game comes out in October. We got that that confirmed like the day after we posted our video with them. So maybe maybe we kind of uh, hardballed it to get to get it announced. No, no, sure, <laughs> sure, 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 sure. It's next. Nice. Uh, my magical list here. Oh, uh, Double Fine and Cappy were interesting. So they had to combine themselves into one booth. Uh, we got to try a drop cord. From Double you, Fine, which using was the new leap thing, we have leap a, motion. It's a little device, but this big, and you use your fingers. Yeah, it was actually really, really good. I liked it. The music was intense. The experience was fun. I uh, would well, like to see its final product. Uh, it unfortunately, requires a leap motion controller. So, but apparently, it's also coming to iOS, which I haven't really, really thought about how it works. Maybe it's multi-touch, and you actually have to do this with it the whole time. I don't know. And I also got to try out Super Time Force. 
from uh, Cappy, and uh, that was interesting too, uh, for a different reason. Uh, it was much more intense. Uh, I actually had play watched someone play it multiple times while I was waiting to actually do my dev walkthrough with it, so at the time I was doing it, I was much more prepared for some of the things the game was throwing at me. I think when you die, it takes forever you to, for you to die, so it takes so, so, so when you're like, ah, I'm like, okay, I'm dead, let's do this. You know what I mean? You're used to uh, to a meat boy where you, where die, you die and you start back in. Well, it would make more sense for it to be much instead of having to be so slow. It kind of cuts into the the speed of the actual game, which is what what the whole thing is. Kind of like um, like Half Man Hero. Yeah. Anyway, the it was uh, also uh, got a T-shirt there. Not wearing it now, of course. Uh, it was fun. It was nice to see them there. Also, uh, Tim Schafer announced their their new game there. Yeah, and we saw Tim Broke Schafer it. briefly. We, we saw him briefly. In fact, I had to move because he was supposed to sit down and do some signing. So that was fun. Um, he he he, he shaved. He shaved. It was, it was a shocker. Oh, there, there he is. <laughs> yeah, he's you know, if he wants to change his life, good for him. Uh, <clears throat> moving faster, Muteki. Got to speak to Adam Rippin again. Uh, the game looks great. The Dragon Fantasy looks great. Uh, great to see that it's coming to PS Vita and also PS3 and its sequel coming exclusively to Sony's platforms. Uh, it's actually a pretty good playing. Uh, it, looked, it was interesting because yes, the game uh, was a little the, bit the slower. Vita, the one from the original. We got to play on the Vita one. It, it, the ability to switch between the old graphics and as well as the updated graphics, and I thought it was really nice. Um, and then the game, the new game we played. Yeah. Um, it showed a more different uh, fighting style, where it was more like kind of like kind of like Chrono Trigger, kind of. Yeah. It was a different style of Chrono Trigger, where you actually actively jump around on the battlefield and attack, and so it's two different gameplay styles. And I want, and then there's also the ship battle, which I thought yeah. was interesting. We didn't get the time to play the ship battle. No, but I saw it. Hopefully, it. it's not as slow as it could be. I did see that it was taking a bit longer to actually get the fight moving along, but uh, I think that. I think that's going to be like, like not consistently happening over and over again. Also, right next to them in the same booth, uh, got to see uh, Red Brothers Games, mm -hmm. Game Silly, a very serious RPG. Uh, the demo didn't have a lot. No, it was more of a uh, kind of explaining how the game was going to work. Yeah, it was both to try and establish the humor of the game series, and also to try and... It gave you a few battles to fight, but even the fight sequences were not fully animated. So I kind of wonder how far along the game is if it's coming out in summer. But uh, hopefully they can get uh, the ball rolling with the animations of the sprites and not delay it too far if it gets caught in that mix. Also, I do like the storytelling elements how it's trying to say what who isn't the hero, then who is, and I'm not going to tell you who it is because I know. Uh, but it was really nice to talk to both of them. Well, the game is named after a clan. Yeah, and good luck to the releases, respectively. Uh, the game comes... Uh, the Dragon Fantasy Book 1 comes out next week, I believe. Uh, anyway, moving on there, we, go to, uh, we spoke to... Uh, we did not speak to experimental gamer developer of... Uh, Boot Hill Heroes, uh, which looks like Earthbound, plays pretty much like Earthbound, but they say there's other things in there too, like Chrono Trigger, which confuses me, because I, I, maybe you go back in time or something, I don't know. Uh, it looks fun. It looks. It's, yeah. it, it's a simple. Like, it's. I mean, it's a simple RPG in some sense. And what you hear means they kind of go. Whoa. They actually have, uh, recently made a post saying they were going to make it widescreen and change the fonts a bit because of people's requests on packs. So okay. even then, they can show that they're actually doing, improving a bit. It, it was fun to play. Uh, I would have liked a little more scope in the demo. The demo really was only that one section before I had to stop. So yeah. uh, it was looks fun. I like the whole how they they essentially make a. Like uh, when you shoot them, down, they actually look like wobble back and forth, like you're shooting yeah. a front turret. Right? We also got to speak with Ben Shostak, I think his last name is. I keep I ruin last names uh, of uh, of Barnyard Intelligence to talk about High Strangeness. Um, it was an interesting uh, game, but the demo really didn't show a lot. He really he de he demonstrated it to us, but the demo was literally about like three rooms, yeah. and, and and it, it doesn't really give us the whole spiel yeah, of this, the length. It's of the basically game. the whole point of it was oh you can switch between eight bit and sixteen bit. That's a good idea because then you can get really detailed and see stuff in 16 and then everything basic and simple and yeah. in 8. The problem is that it was so limited. It was like, you're right, it was, it was three rooms. And it was all a linear path. So it's like, oh, you can't pass through this way? Flip. Okay, we can make it. That was my biggest concern when I saw it. I'm like, okay, uh, how does it affect the battle sequence, though? Do, do bosses require you to switch back and forth consistently? Hopefully we get to see that there's more. A lot the of, yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of questions about it, and hopefully we'll see it in the near future. But the music sounds awesome, in case you didn't know. Disaster Piece is working with them, so it uh, can't be anything bad in terms of music. Then we get to speak with Jennifer from Nyan Nyan. Mm -hmm. uh, they're made up of ex-Rareware developers. Yes, and they're making uh, Tengami. Tengami. It's, a, it's a, a game based on origami and pop-up books yeah. and papercraft. Let me tell you, uh, having... Going to all these games that were much more intense 
much quicker. This is a very calming game. Yes. It's it, very swell. And I like <laughs> and the idea of like flipping pages with the, it makes sense. And ac for me, I think it actually used the pr the, t the the iPad the iPad correctly. It, it actually embraced the the concept. But instead of just having buttons that you had to press on the touch screen, it actually requires you to turn pages and flip things over and do pullings, and it worked really well. Yeah, and uh, it might come to Wii U. They kind of didn't specify that it was exactly. They're in talks, so it does look good. It does. So even if it's an uh, iOS game, it's definitely something to look into. Yeah, it's definitely looking into, especially because it fits the more casual play style of an iOS product. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we got uh, finally Face Palm Games. Got to speak with Oli uh, about the game. Uh, and it, also the writer of the game, I can't. I think his name is Tom. At the mind, what's the game? game? The game is the Swapper, <laughs> and the game involves uh, essentially you play the guy going into uh, this planet, and you have this gun that allows you to create clones of yourself and swap with the clone. Yes, exactly. That's the name. Uh, the thing I saw about it was very puzzle oriented. Yes. But one thing I've heard, read about it, and I think it actually makes it look very unique in the, in the style of it, is that everything is actually from real life. Yeah, it's all claymation or it's ceramics. Like it's found objects. It's actually, so it's like they took pictures of it and they put it in the game. Yeah. And, and you so can see, you can kind of tell by how realistic some of the graphics the lighting look because it actually is realistic graphics. It's real. It was in the game at one point. I actually wanted to ask them what games that use that style they'd be interested in, but then I came to the realization that it was because he mentioned the reason was that his mother was into that sort of style anyways and also it was much easier than having to make 3D models himself. And uh, it looked great. It was fun to play and uh it's definitely going to be a hard, interesting puzzle game. Mm -hmm. And it was on the PAX 10, so even even better for them, right? <laughs> uh, and that's it for terms of the actual developers that we spoke with and games we played from them. Uh, but, you know, we also did some games from the miscellaneous montage. We covered little snippets of games here. And yeah, there, well, yeah. Uh, like dive kick and stuff. No, so now we're running past probably we thought we were expecting. Yeah, uh, we are. But uh, what games and stuff did you think we didn't do right? Well, I do have to agree that we didn't talk to as many people as we should have, uh, especially when we had the opportunity. Um, some of the games we'd sit down and play, and then the, like, we'd see the, the guys who made the games talking to us, and we'd talk to them and we should, while we were playing, and I'm like, well, maybe we should have just did a flat-out interview for them. Also, just in terms of preppedness, we weren't as prepped this year. No, we weren't. We were literally rushed to get ready to go this year. Well, that was because last year we had uh, been given the, the list, way the list of developers and even the panel listing about a month or at least three weeks before. That was... We yeah. had... We had Less than a week to prepare us, to get prepare ourselves for uh, the actual event, and some companies didn't even announce their major projects until days before. Like Transistor, for example, is I think my least my biggest loss, I'd say, <laughs> uh, because I wanted to really film the game and talk to the team, but. Uh, the game was announced on Monday, and I had a feeling that since the game was already a big published developer with Bastion, that getting uh, getting us to interview them would have been a very improbable situation. So I simply stepped back. I was very happy later. how how we received where this year. We were there was everyone was like, oh sure, we'll interview right now. Let's go over here and yeah. talk. We didn't have any issues with interviewing people. No. And in fact, we didn't have anyone saying you guys can't film this. We, of course, we also stepped outside of even approaching Bethesda or 2K's <laughs> games or they, Ubisoft. Just for a fact, they, they never let you record anything yeah. unless you were press and even then it's more likely just write impressions. And all guided demos and stuff. Those you're never allowed to film anyways. So we didn't cover those and we didn't even go to see them. I think one of the things we should do next year is actually spend more time just trying out stuff, going to those things. So apparently some sense the line for Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag was actually looking long, but it was actually because the inside was... Uh, was holding like 70 people. So if there's a line, it doesn't matter, you're going in next, pretty much. Um, Sega wasn't there, Konami wasn't there, Square Enix was there in muted form, showing off Tomb Raider, uh, Deus Ex, uh, Human Revolution, Director's Cut, or whatever it was called. Uh, we didn't cover anyone from Silver, uh, from Deep Silver. They had the game. They had Saints Row 4 there for the first time. Uh, we kind of figured since it was a presentation that wouldn't be playable, uh, recordable either. Um, most of the third-party companies, other than Capcom, were pretty much kind of muted, and Square Enix was there too. Uh, in terms of Western publishers, EA was EA even there? I, I don't remember exactly. League of Legends got moved to another corner. Oh, you forgot Twisted Pixel. Oh my gosh, I didn't have it written here. Why me? No, Twisted. Oh, that's because I have it listed here. Twisted Pixel is part of Microsoft now. Twisted Pixel, um, Local Cycle was all right. <laughs> they, yeah, we, we, they, after all that, that was like, oh, right. yeah, yeah, they uh, they had all their games playable. I think every game, every playable. game they ever made was yes. there, uh, and they also had a lot of merch, a lot of setups. They actually apparently made the thing themselves. Yeah, and they also had uh, they actually showed uh, Loco Cycle. It was a it was basically them playing the game. They played the game. Um, it looks like it's basically more like, like it's mixed between uh, 
Spy Hunter and Beat 'Em Up. Yeah, and one of the concerns I have with Twist Pixels games is, you know, they they showed off two, uh, three years ago their the last major new IP, which was uh, uh, Co Comic Jumper. And uh, I had the concern when I was watching that, I was like, oh, it's going to be kind of repetitive. It looks kind of the same thing, just, just they kind of shifted around a lot. And it turned out to be a bit repetitive in terms of the, what you were doing. Uh, hopefully, when I saw the QTEs, I immediately had to go, oh, no. Oh, don't do that again. Because uh, QTEs are yes. something I, we kind of don't like. But uh, I liked the style. Again, you know, humor. I really want a new Spy Hunter, so... <laughs> <laughs> I would I would totally like the game in that vein, and you know if the humor is consistent, I think it would be a pretty good game. All right. Well, um, anything else? No, I think that's it. I think we should have done more stuff outside of the of the show floor. You know, we didn't we did get to play a game which we did mention called Johann Sebastian Joust. Yeah, that uh, was cool. We used the the, the PlayStation Move that, controllers. That game was intense. Apparently, they had a, a panel on that too, which we didn't go to. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. that, that was just sports friends. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, any final words? Next year, I hope that we are better prepared. Mm -hmm. And we have a hotel that's close by. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, a monopod would be a very... Yes, I'm point. sorry for the camera being a little shaky. You, but after holding the camera like this all, for three days straight, it starts to wear on you. Yeah, and maybe have to only play more games, so I have to use the camera. Yes. Because the last few shots for the miscellaneous montage, I... Filmed. Yes. Instead of Tony, because Tony was like, I'm done, not half, game over, it's done, uh, Also, finished. Tony could maybe do some interviews next time. Uh, I don't know there's only there are two of us, yeah, after there, all. There are I two of us. The, split the difficulties. Uh, anyway, um, our next convention is New York Comic Con mm -hmm. uh, in October, uh, but there's E3 first. Uh, we're not going to E3, sadly, we are not. But we'll be doing our usual E3 videos where we do our usual uh, guesstimates, and then afterwards we cry about our estimates being wrong. And we've, uh, been, we've been pretty, just to just let you know in on this, we've been pretty right on with some of the things. Some of the New Year's stuff. Uh, some of the years that happened from earlier in the year. Anyway, we're also going to be doing more videos besides the uh, stuff coming into uh, E3. Uh, look out for that in our channel. Feel free to subscribe. Uh, also, watch our Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 2D, 3D, and 10. Yes, Let's we play. finally finished but that. We finished not a few couple weeks, actually the day before PAX East. Yeah, we did that. So, uh, hope you enjoy all that. Hope you enjoy what we filmed. Hope you enjoy what comes up later. And I hope you're enjoying what you're watching right now. Uh, now is the time I would be posting like an ad, but I don't have the ability to do that now. So, anyway, I'm Alex. I'm Tony. We're Third Red Minion, and we're out of here.